Hello again, flute tubers. Sorry to call you that once in a while. I don't know, just sometimes I feel like I should call you that for some reason. But I have some very good news for today. We are going to revisit Taffanel and Gobert number five, which we talked about at length in episode number five. And I found that just as you would hope, the Flute Player's Bible, Taffanel and Gobert 17 Big Daily Exercises, is in the public domain. You can find it online for free. So I will give you a link to that. This means that even if you don't want to spend the money on this book, which I like to have the book. I like to see Grandpa Taffanel and Grandpa Gobert, <laughs> plus the um, circle of fifths that my teacher drew out for me when I was in fifth grade. <laughs> but regardless, if you don't want to purchase your own book, you can get it for free as long as you have internet access. The other good thing this means for today is that I don't have to be stingy with what I show you of the exercise as we go. I'll just put the entire exercise up for you to see as we talk about it because it is in the public domain so I can do that. And if you're looking for a way to thank me for giving you the Flute Player's Bible for free, the best thing you can do is to like, subscribe, comment, and share. I know I am actually a full-blown adult human being, but it's pretty ridiculous how happy it makes me every single time I get a new like or comment or especially subscription. So just search your hearts and see if you can do it. Let's launch into chromatic scales though. So the first thing I should say is that if you are a pretty new flute player, you have to get your full range chromatic scale in place. So either from your low C or your low B, if you have a B foot joint, up to your high C at least, maybe up to high D, and make it very fluent and smooth so that you don't have to think about it. It needs to be in your muscle memory. So you don't wanna think, wait, I just played a B flat, what comes next? You just want it to be completely fluent. Then once you get to that point, I would go over to the Flute Player's Bible and play number five. As we've discussed before, this is a really important exercise. Even though it's just chromatic scales and you think, oh, that's so simple, it is simple in a way because it's very fundamental and you wanna have the fundamental aspects of your playing as wonderful and enthralling as you can make them so that everybody wants to hear you play a chromatic scale. It sounds so good. The first thing that I want to say about TNG number five applies equally to the entire book of TNG 17 Big Daily Exercises, which is this. Yes, this book should start out being about fingers. It should be about getting your fingers completely smooth and even and get the muscle memory there so you can play things just automatically. But once you get the fingers, you're not done because then it becomes about sound. It becomes about how you're breathing, how you're using your sound, how much flexibility you have making different kinds of sound. And then it becomes really about both. I actually went through those phases of it's all about fingers and then it was all about sound and making a homogenous sound and supported sound and all those things. And then I realized, but I can play faster. I need to get my fingers going faster. So it became equally about sound and fingers at that point. And that's what you really want from all of these exercises. So as far as Taffanel and Gobert number five goes, the way that I practice it the most commonly is to incorporate it into my tone studies. So I will start with Della Sonorite number one, where I'm just going down by half step and I'm taking my time and finding exactly the sound that I want. And then when I get to the B in the staff, and it's the B that begins L, letter L of number five, I will then play L. And then I'll do a tone study going down another half step, and then I will play a K. And I'll work my way back to letter A. There are a few reasons I like this. One is, 
it's incorporated into tone studies so I'm making sure that my tone does not change the same tone that I'm getting in my tone studies I'm keeping through my chromatic scale and up and down my chromatic range so my tone doesn't change as I go up and down it's very homogeneous Another thing that's very important for me when I do this is that I always do the two octave chromatic scales in one breath. So I make sure I take a deep breath, I play through the chromatic scale, and as an added bonus here, what I'm doing is getting my body into deep breathing mode. So I'm no longer in the breathing mode of when you're just sitting still and you're barely tapping into your lungs, you only need to use like five to 10% of your lungs. I'm not even in the breathing mode where you're walking around and you're using maybe 50% of your lungs. I'm really using my entire lung capacity because then I'm gonna keep that. As I go into my practice session, I'm gonna keep breathing deeply and using my full lung capacity. This first way that I've discussed playing TNG number five is often how I will start warming up very first thing when I play the flute in the day because it incorporates tone studies and finger work and it gets me breathing so I find it's a great way to get my practice session going on the right foot. My second most common way that I practice this exercise is what I talked about at length in episode 5 and this way to practice is a way that really emphasizes support. This is where I start at A but I start at the top of the scale instead of the bottom of the scale. I go down from the C above the staff to the low C and then back up I feel as though I'm sighing, so I can't ever ease up off of the support. And again, this is a great way to feel support. I might do this not the very first thing in my practice session, but maybe the second thing, when I've had a little bit of something more basic and I wanna feel that I'm really solid and connected to my support. I can't be done with this exercise until I feel that my support is completely consistent and reliable. I can't ever ease off of my support. My sound can't change. It can't squeeze at the top. It can't get wimpy at the bottom. It has to be completely consistent. The third way that I often play this exercise is surprise as written. I figure I owe Taffanel and Gobert at least enough to play their exercise the way that they actually intended that it be played. So I do sometimes play it as written. The only thing is I just don't usually start my day of practice off this way because I wanna warm up to that low C where it starts first. It's purely because it starts on a low C and I would rather warm up and feel more comfortable with my entire sound, my entire range before I start this exercise on that low C. But while we're here talking about doing it as written, let's notice some details about how it's written. For instance, notice that the time signature is both 6-8 and 2-4. And be sure you know what the difference is between those. That one's gonna be da 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 and the other's gonna be da 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 da. So there's a different feel to it and you wanna have the control to do both with no issues. This is an extra way to make sure that your fingers are totally even and controlled. Also, you probably have noticed already, or you know from ancient days of playing this exercise yourself, that there are several different articulations indicated, and you should do them all. So you may have noticed 
that I tend to slur this exercise as a default. That kind of goes for this whole book because if your fingers are uneven, you hear it better when you slur. And if your airstream is changing, you'll hear it more when you slur. So I like to slur first, make sure that my fingers and my airstream are in place and then branch out and do these other articulations. But when you do that, don't let your airstream change. Don't let the angle change. Don't let the speed change. Just pretend with your airstream that your tongue is doing nothing because you want to keep the sound just as consistent and just as focused and everything else as it was when you were not articulating. So no matter what your level is, put in your time with chromatic scales. You will never say goodbye to them. We will never ever put them aside. And this is the way to be sure that all of your basics are in place. You don't want to tell yourself, oh, I could do that years ago. They just need to keep getting better and better through all of your years of flute playing.